KTSA News Flash. The articles of impeachment are heading to a full House vote this weekend. If approved, it's on to the Senate. Texas Senator Ted Cruz appeared on ABC's This Week, the George Stephanopoulos, where he said this impeachment is entirely a politically motivated attack on the president. Jerry Nadler and Adam Schiff are, are interested in one thing, which is their partisan attack. You notice they have zero interest in any actual corruption. They don't want to know what happened during Burisma. In fact, they say if you investigate what happened with Hunter Biden, that's a crime in progress. In the Senate, the Republican majority likely will vote to keep the president in office. A San Antonio man shot a prowler in his backyard just northwest of downtown this morning. The homeowner claims he was awakened by his dog barking around 2.30 this morning and saw a man standing by his back door. He told police he fired two warning shots in the air and one into the ground. That one ricocheted and hit 46-year-old Robert Smith in the leg. Smith flagged down officers on Warren Street and was taken to a hospital. Elizabeth Ruiz, KTSA News. An alleged assault in San Marcos by a group of frat boys now has a Texas State University student suing. Confrontation near Texas State University. Attorney Jay Harvey says student Nick Panagiotopoulos was accosted in late October after trying to stop a fight between his friend and members of the Pi Kappa Phi fraternity. They chased him down the street to attack him. That attack landed Panagiotopoulos in the hospital for several weeks. Now Harvey is suing Texas State University's Ada Road chapter of Pi Kappa Phi, as well as the fraternity's national chapter and three of its members. The fraternity's got to learn to exercise some level of control. The petition alleges the local and national chapters have a history of encouraging overconsumption of alcohol, hazing, and violence. That's KEYE TV's Gabriela Vidal. The search is on for a missing Austin woman and her missing infant daughter. Heidi Broussard was last seen dropping her older child off at his elementary school. A still image from a security camera shows her smiling at a staff member. From there, she and her three-week-old daughter apparently went home and then vanished. Her fiancé is Shane Carey. We have a six-year-old son named Salish. She would never leave him. He believes someone grabbed the woman and the baby, and he's pleading. Drop her off anywhere. I don't care. Just make sure she's safe. And okay, the baby's okay. Austin police also are appealing for the public's help. Jim Ryan, ABC News. Nine out of ten of us go to work when we're sick. 33% of our co-workers say they always go to work when they are sick, no matter how sick they are. Account Temp Senior VP Kim Gartstein says that leads to more people getting sick and lower production. She says, however, a lot of that comes from the higher-ups. It does start from the top, and I think, you know, for supervisors and managers that might be listening to this, you know, if you're not feeling well, set the example and, and do stay home. And I think in the long run, you'd have a much more productive workforce. She says ego does play a role in bosses thinking the place can't get along without them. For co-workers, the top reasons they go to work sick, too much work to do, not wanting to burden co-workers, and guilt. Jim Roop, Los Angeles. Unless you have an in with Santa, you're running out of time to get your gifts there on time. Still need to send out presents? You've already missed the Postal Service recommended date for getting them there by Christmas. It was this past Saturday. But if you hustle, you can make it if you ship them first class or priority mail. Today is FedEx deadline for ground and home delivery. For UPS, you have until Thursday for three-day select. After that, you'll have to pay even more for second or next day air. Deborah Rodriguez, CBS News. KTSA Money News. Apple and Google, among others, are facing serious allegations of child labor law violations. The tech giants are named as defendants in a case accusing them of aiding and abetting mining companies that profited from forced child labor. Some children died or were seriously injured working in Congolese cobalt mines. The same pharmaceutical empire that manufactured the drug widely blamed for fueling the nationwide opioid epidemic is now selling an antidote for overdoses. Mundi Pharma is owned by the billionaire Sackler family, which also owns OxyContin maker Purdue Pharma. The Hallmark Channel is reversing course after pulling ads showing brides kissing. The TV channel initially told Zola, an online wedding planning service, that it could not accept ads that are, quote, deemed controversial. Zola then announced it would stop advertising with Hallmark. The owner of the Hallmark Channel has since apologized, and the company said it will reinstate the commercials. Hotels may turn a blind eye to guests taking shampoo bottles or even towels, but what about the mattress? According to review site Wellness Heaven's 2019 survey, at least four dozen mattresses have gone missing from luxury hotel rooms around the world. But towels and bathrobes remain the most common stolen items. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. I'm Diane King Hall. 
KTSA AccuWeather. This afternoon, breezy with the clouds giving away to sun, high 68. Clear and breezy tonight, low 30 in the hill country to 36 along the river walk. Tomorrow, partly sunny and breezy with a high of 55. Wednesday, plenty of sunshine, high 60. I'm Brian May with your KTSA Stevens Roofing AccuWeather forecast. I'm Dennis Foley getting news around the clock in 550 KTSA and FM 1071. Get news anytime online at KTSA.com.